focus of my lab uh, for the last 10 years or so has really been trying to develop ways to eliminate or suppress senescent cells. And to summarize uh, 10 years' worth of work and a lot of postdoc and graduate student years, um, we have used a number of different approaches to identify different types of senolytics. So we screened natural product libraries, we identified facetin, luteolin, and other compounds, and facetin, as you know, was in multiple clinical trials. We're also collaborating with Vera Gorbanova, Yusin Su, Nir Barzilai, and Jan Feik to use the genetics of centenarians to identify validated targets, and then we're trying to develop compounds that mimic the activity of those variants. And so we're developing drugs targeting CERT6, uh, SMAD3, which you heard from Usen, and Vera, I think, is going to talk about fucoidin, which is a complex sugar, which we've shown that activates CERT6, similar to the two amino acid centenarian variant. Uh, we also have screened uh, FDA, uh, or clinically used compounds. Uh, we've identified phenofibrate and uh, zoledronic acid, a bisphosphonate that's used for osteoporosis, as having senolytic activity. These obviously are in patients uh, around the world. We've also done medicinal chemistry to try to improve the activity of our senolytics. In particular, we've made analogs of facetin that are now tenfold more potent. Uh, the question is, are they more potent on the same types of senescent cells? We're making the satin analogs, bisphosphonate analogs, et cetera. We're also using bioinformatics, and this is where the, really the story started. This is with Jim Kirkland and Tamar Chaconia using bioinformatics to identify desatinib and quercetin, which is a widely used combination to clear senescent cells, and also nevidoclax and other BCL2 family uh, member inhibitors. But what I want to talk about today, just to mix it up, is talk about the biologics we've been working on that have either senolytic or senomorphic activity. So these are things which occur in vivo, which may naturally play a role in regulating senescence. So I want to uh, talk about stem cell-derived extracellular vesicles, microRNAs derived from these vesicles, which have either senolytic or senomorphic activity, and then close by talking about our approach to identify microRNAs that drive or suppress senescence and give you one example of a microRNA that can drive senescence. So where this story started uh, some 10 years ago with Johnny Huard and Laura Niederhofer was that we tested the ability of young adult stem cells, in this case, these are muscle-derived stem cells, to extend the lifespan of a very severe progeria, the ERCC1-deficient mouse. If you inject MEFs into these mice, there's no effect. They live only one month. If you inject stem cells from progeria mice or from naturally aged wild-type mice, there's no effect on lifespan. But if you inject young, healthy muscle-derived stem cells, we can double, in some cases, even triple the lifespan of these mice. We went on the show that if you treated the progeria model, which you hear about from Laura later today, that has a six-month lifespan, two injections of a few million stem cells delayed the time of onset of pathologies and reduced the severity as seen here in the diamonds. So adult stem cells can extend lifespan and health span, at least in the progeria model. And we've now gone on to do this with bone marrow MSCs and others have done it with other types of adult stem cells. Functional stem cells work, aged or dysfunctional stem cells do not. The other thing we showed some years ago was if you co-culture young viable stem cells with stem cells from the progeria mouse and look for proliferation and the ability of these muscle cells to differentiate towards myofibers, we could show that co-culture in the transwell system, so there was no cell-to-cell -cell contact, led to increased proliferation and improved differentiation, suggesting there were soluble factors in the conditioned media that was able to confer this effect. We then went on to show that if you tried the same thing in our senescence assay, so if you took conditioned media from adult stem cells, whether they're MSCs or muscle-derived stem cells or adipose-derived stem cells, if you put the conditioned media on senescent cells and then look for effects on senescence, we could show that conditioned media from young stem cells suppress senescence. There was no death, so this is a senomorphic suppression. And this would do it in both senescent MEFs, senescent MSCs, and EVs, or sorry, uh, uh, conditioned media from progeria stem cells had no effect. So they appear to lose function with aging. So then we spent a lot of time trying to sort out what was the factor or factors from these young stem cells that confer this effect. And what we identified, I won't show you all the negative data, but the positive data was we actually could isolate extracellular vesicles, and these are predominantly, in this case, exosomes, because they're a smaller size, 
that if you edit these exosomes, again, to our senescence assay, they work the same as the condition media. And if you depleted the condition media of EVs, you lost the effect. Now, this isn't complete suppression, it's partial suppression. And it's dose dependent. So if you put in young EVs, the more you put in, the better the effect. And old stem cell EVs don't work as well. So that was interesting. And we went on then to show that if you actually treated mice, in this case, two-year-old wild-type mice with just two injections of 10 to the 9th EVs, and I should point out these are human MSC-derived, provided by Sai Kang Lim from Singapore, who prepares them, lyophilizes them, and sends them across the world for us to inject in the mice. And we could show that just two injections, you could see a reduction in some markers of senescence, in particular P16, but also IL-1 beta expression and others. So there appeared to be a xenomorphic activity conferred by young wild-type human MSCs. And if you inject them into a uh, Loris progeria model that lives six months, two injections delayed the onset of symptoms. And I didn't show this, but delays their severity or reduces the severity. So these vesicles, human vesicles, could suppress markers of senescence inflammation and also extend health span. But what was interesting was, after we published this, there was a follow-up paper that showed a similar effect with adipose-derived MSCs, but they went on to show with Steve Horvath that these EVs actually partially or, 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 or at least short-term appeared to rejuvenate the epigenetic clock, suggesting that these EVs may suppress senescence, suppress inflammation, but actually may have some capacity to rejuvenate certain tissues. So we were interested to know what components of these EVs were important for conferring this effect. And we hypothesized, without a lot of evidence, that it was actually the microRNA composition. So we looked at the microRNA profile of either non-stem cells, fibroblast EVs, and different sources. I'm showing two different sources. This is human MSCs and human liver stem cells, but we've done other types of stem cells, compared them, and we had took the microRNAs, which are most prevalent in the stem cells, but not in the fibroblasts. We may be missing microRNAs, but that's where we started. And what we showed was if you took these individual microRNAs and transfect them into senescent IMR90s, we had a few microRNAs that suppressed SA beta gal. If you looked at P16 and P21, there were microRNAs that suppressed these markers, but they were not the same ones that suppressed SA beta gal. And they were not the same ones that actually suppressed IL-1 beta and IL-6. In fact, most of the microRNAs stimulated IL-1 beta. It was only one or two that suppressed IL-1 beta and IL-6. So we went on then to say, okay, well, if EVs deliver a cocktail of microRNAs, can we come up with a cocktail that works as a xenomorphic? So we screened, and this is only a subset of the analysis, we screened a variety of different combinations, and we identified few combinations at ratios that appeared to lead to a suppression of all these markers of senescence. The problem was really IL-1 beta, because for many of the combinations, it actually went up. And so we came up with a cocktail. It was called E5 because it was the fifth sample that we tested. It's a combination of four microRNAs that if you transfect them into senescent IMR90s, we see a suppression of every marker we can measure of senescence. What's interesting, these four microRNAs actually go down with age. So this is looking at these microRNAs, the expression of them in liver from age mice. And interestingly, they all go down with aging. And if you put these in a lipofectin-type reagent, inject them into mice, look at tissues that take up these lipo the liposomes, we can see a reduction in senescence in the liver and in fat tissue, as we're not showing the fat, suggesting that this cocktail has xenomorphic activity. I'm not saying it's optimized, but it just shows that we can identify cocktails and microRNAs that function to suppress senescence markers and inflammatory markers. And we're currently looking for effects on the epigenome of these different tissues. So the question comes is, what are these microRNAs targeting? And this is complicated because microRNAs have a lot of targets. But if you do bulk RNA-seq, we can see pathways that went down, P53 pathway, senescence pathway, TGF-beta signaling pathway, and interestingly, a RAP1 pathway went up. And if you do your bioinformatics, uh, we could actually take, these are the four nodes, represent the four microRNAs. We identified nodes that multiple microRNAs targeted. And so this is a very extensive work. I'm gonna give you one example. And it's just showing that three microRNAs actually target factors that regulate P53, 
And we know P53 is important because if we use inhibitor P53, we lose the centomorphic effect of this microRNA cocktail. And we've shown that these microRNAs do suppress PCAF and a kinase that actually phosphorylates P53. I don't think this is the only pathway, but this shows that we can identify pathways which we then think we might be able to develop small molecules to target to try to improve the centomorphic activity. So the other approach we took, and this was uh, a collaboration with Michal Masternak, who published a very nice paper a couple years ago looking at circulating microRNAs in the blood of wild-type mice and Ames dwarf mice. And what was interesting was this MIR-106 goes down with natural aging, but stays up in Ames dwarf mice. So the hypothesis was maybe the circulating microRNA that we probably in vesicles, but maybe it's also free, we, we don't know the, the act, actually how it's being circulated, but we're hypothesizing this mostly in vesicles, that this might be playing a role in regulating aging, at least in Ames dwarf mice. So we've shown that if you transfect a single microRNA in the senescent IMR90s to a C12 FDG staining assay, that at higher doses, we actually see a senolytic activity. I'm not going to show you all the different assays, but it actually kills senescent but not non-senescent IMR90s. And if you look at markers of senescence, it appears to be preferential for P21 positive cells. So if you kill them off, P16 levels actually go up because of the cells that remain after the senolytic activity. So this appears to be P21 dependent, at least in cell culture. We've shown if you look at the Sen Mayo panel of SAS factors, that treatment with this microRNA reduces not all, but the majority of those SAS factors. But we also know this was the BCL2 family member that's upregulated by P53, Puma, increases dramatically with this microRNA. And if you then do siRNA to knock down Puma, you lose the effect of this MIR-106. So at least part of the effect, we think, is mediated through modulation of apro and antiapoptotic factors, in this case, Puma, which leads to this apoptosis. So this is a naturally occurring circulating microRNA, which could, don't know yet, play a role in regulating senescence during aging. And we've gone on to show that if you take this single microRNA and transfect it into two-year-old, two or inject it into two-year-old mice, again, we see markers of senescence going down, not all markers. But interestingly, in vivo, P16 and P21 are reduced. So we don't know if that's, if you reduce P21, if it affects on peripheral senescence, or if it's actually targeting P16 positive cells in addition, at least in liver. But this just shows a single microRNA can have senolytic activity. So, with this kind of interesting data, both with EV microRNAs and circling microRNAs, we said, I think we really need to put a major effort into seeing if we can identify key microRNAs that modulate senescence and actually which modulate partial reprogramming. If indeed microRNAs in vesicles confer this change on the epigenetic clock that Steve Horvath and colleagues published in Science Advances. So what we're doing, and this is ongoing work, I'll give you, give you one example, is we're using a biosensor library developed by Brian Brown at Mount Sinai when he was in Luigi Naldini's lab. So this actually functionally measures activity of microRNAs because it modulates EGFP expression. So if EGFP is high, there's no microRNA, EGFP is low, there's very active microRNA. And the other thing we do is we actually precipitate the argonaut complex. So this brings down microRNA, in loaded with a messenger RNA, its target messenger RNA. So this shows functionally that this microRNA is in a complex and down-regulating that specific microRNA. I don't expect you to read this. Uh, this just shows we've identified a number of microRNAs which functionally go up or down with uh, senescence, and this is a topicide-induced senescence in IMR90s. And we've identified the messenger RNAs, corresponding ones, which go up or down depending on the microRNA. So what's shown here in this panel in the top is just when you treat cells with a topicide, we see microRNAs go up and their target messenger RNAs go down. And we've looked at four days and 10 days. And we have specific microRNAs that are induced early and induced late, we think, to play a role, potentially, we have to show that, in modulating senescence. So just to show you one example, and there's obviously a lot of microRNAs there, there's gonna be combinations, there are lots of targets, but to give you one example of the types of analysis we're doing, MIR-96 is a microRNA that comes up immediately after induction with a topicide, 
It's dependent upon p53 expression for that increase. And we've shown that if you take a lentivirus and transduce IMR90 cells with that lentivirus expressing MIR96, you see p16 and p21 go up around a month after transduction. But what's interesting is IL-1 beta and IL-6 go up almost immediately. So this microRNA drives expression of SAS factors, which we think then leads to induction of markers of senescence. What's interesting is if you look at late markers, um, we've heard about line one and, and, uh, from John and others, but if you look at interferon alpha and ORF1 from line one, they actually are lower in these cells than they are in non or, or control transduced cells. So we think this microRNA actually suppresses these late markers of senescence, but increases early markers of senescence. Interestingly, if you stain for gamma H2X foci, there's evidence of DNA damage. And I think Joao has shown there may be TAFs in these. I'll have to talk after this, but I think there's also evidence of TAFs. And we've done a lot of epigenetic profile. I'm not going to show you figure after figure, but I just want to point out that there are change in different marks. There's this H3K4 methylation. It goes down in these cells. Other marks go up. So it changes the epigenetic landscape, which we think then drives expression of these senescence markers. So I'm going to close by saying that we can now actually take this information and identify targets of these microRNAs, and some of them may be druggable. Now, it turns out that MIR-96 regulates many epigenetic regulators that are part of the SYN3B complex. This is a co-repressor complex. There's many components to it. It's very complicated. It's been shown to associate with many different transcription complexes, including the DREAM complex. It's been implicated in, in contributing to senescence, contributing to quiescence, depending on the cell type. And so what we've shown is that if you inhibit SYN3B with an siRNA, we don't see a huge effect on P16, but we completely block IL-1 beta and IL-6 by suppressing this complex. Now, this complex and related complexes have been drugged, or people tried to drug them for cancer therapy. So there are many compounds in the clinic to modulate this co-repressor complex that's been implicated in cancer, quiescence, senescence, et cetera. So we've used an inhibitor that targets the SYN3B complex and shown that we can actually now reduce P16 expression, P21 expression, IL-1 beta expression, as well as many other markers of senescence. So this just gives one example how we can use this bioinformatic approach based on the targets of microRNAs to modulate senescence. And hopefully, we're going to see a similar effect with some of these microRNAs on the epigenome. And so we're doing the same approach in the context of cells where you induce OSKM and then look for microRNA, functional microRNA expression at different time points after induction to see if we can identify key regulators of this process. So just to summarize, we've shown that young but not old adult stem cell EVs function as centimorphics. Um, we've shown at least part of this activity, and it's probably not all of the activity, but part of this is through microRNAs, which are small, easily delivered, and very stable. So that's kind of advantage here. We found a cocktail. It's probably not the optimal cocktail, but we've shown you can identify a cocktail of microRNAs from many different sources of adult stem cells that function as a centimorphic. We've shown also that in circulation, at least of long-lived mice, the Ames dwarf mice, there is a microRNA which is found, presumably some of it is in vesicles, that functions apparently as a senolytic. Whether it functions as a senolytic during aging has not been proven, but we think we could use that therapeutically. And so we're trying to develop approaches and expand on our approaches to identify functional microRNAs that are really important for modulating senescence and then potentially rejuvenation, and then use this information hopefully to identify novel drugs that target these same pathways that the microRNAs are targeting.